Hello students, today I shall start with a new chapter class. So at the very beginning you will have to come to know what is class, what is this function. So class is basically a machine member which is used to connect the driving shaft to the driven shaft. Okay. So that the driven shaft may be started or stopped at will without stopping the driving shaft. Okay. So this is used mostly in automobiles. In order to stop a vehicle, it is required that driven shaft should stop but the engine should continue to run therefore it becomes necessary that the driven shaft should be disengaged from the driving shaft the engagement and disengagement of the shaft is obtained by means of clutch without uh, which is operated by a lever so it's very easy to understand so clutch is nothing but a machine number which is used to connect a driver shaft and driven shaft okay and uh, you can uh, easily uh, uh, stop the vehicle without stopping the uh, engine by uh, disengaging the driven shaft from the driving shaft. So this engagement and disengagement, uh, the whole thing is operated by the clutch. But for during this particular session, you no need to stop the vehicle engine. Okay. So without stopping the engine, you can easily uh, uh, disengage the uh, uh, driven shaft from the driving shaft with the help of clutch and you, your uh, total uh, purpose is fulfilled so it is basically operated by lever okay so as you uh, go on uh, continued you should watch that in the previous chapter break i have uh, told you that uh, brake operations mainly done where the main primary force in brake is the frictional force here also in the class your main primary force will be calculated as a frictional force so frictional force calculation is the most important thing here and as soon as you calculate the frictional force you can easily find out the frictional torque and that torque has to be transmitted to the shaft okay so the type of class is a positive class and frictional class what is positive class the simplest type of positive class is the jaw or claw class okay the use of the jaw class are frequently applied to sprocket wheels gear and pulley and what is frictional class the principal application is where the transmission of power of shafts and machines must be started and stopped frequently so frictional classes are classified in also two categories axial frictional class and radial frictional class so axial frictional class examples are discs and plate class and cone class okay discs or plate class and cone class radial frictional class is the example of centrifugal class okay so what are the necessary properties that a class material should have so these are the properties that you must have to remember okay it should have the high and uniform coefficient of friction it should not be affected by moisture and oil it should have the ability to withstand the high temperature caused by slippage it should have the high thermal conductivity it should have the th high uh, resistance to wear and scoring okay so uh, all the properties are important so the whatever the friction is applied the friction must be constant and uniform okay the class material must not be affected by moisture and oil this is very easy okay and it should have the high temperature resistance capacity capacity okay so it's all it is it should also have the high heat conductivity so that the whatever the heat is generated okay so that much of a heat will shall have to dissipate it immediately okay so it should be it should have the high thermal conductivity and uh, the class material must also have the high resistance to wear okay so look at the disc plate or disc or plate clutch construction okay now we'll go to the design of disc or plate clutch so this is the axial clutch okay axial frictional clutch the most important example is the disc or plate clutch okay here you see the forces applied axially along the axis of the clutch so this is the axial clutch but in the centrifugal class uh, as i will uh, go through in the next class i will discuss you that in the centrifugal class the uh, force applied will be perpendicular to the uh, central axis of the um, clutch material clutch okay so this is the radial clutch but here you see the in the axial clutch the best example is the disc clutch or plate clutch okay so this is the single disc or single plate okay now here you see the 
uh, uh, that these two particular parts are also having the brake liner i mean uh, frictional frictional liners okay so here see here this is the part and this is a part okay so two frictional surface these two are the frictional surfaces maintained at contact by axial thrust w from here the w thrust is applied as shown is figure okay so this is the inside radius is r2 outside radius is r1 okay now from the from this way if you uh, look at this thing uh, from the side view you will get the uh, view like this so samely this is plotted this is r2 is the inside radius r1 is the outside radius okay the mean radius is plotted like r not in, this is not actually the mean radius because inside r2 and r1 we have plotted a elementary and elementary part which is having the radius of r and thickness is dr so r basically is the radius of the elementary part elementary circle elementary ring you can say elementary ring that has been considered it its uh, radius is r and its thickness is dr okay so t is the torque transmitted by the clutch p is the intensity of axial pressure this must this is the p okay r1 and r2 is the external and internal radius of the frictional faces r is the mean radius of the frictional face mu is the coefficient of friction now consider the elementary ring of radius r and thickness dr as shown is figure okay now we know the contact surface of the frictional surface is the 2 pi r dr okay so the, the re area of the uh, ring is the 2 pi r dr okay now the normal or axial force on the ring del w is considered uh, for axial force on the ring is the pressure into area so what is pressure so pressure p into area into 2 pi r dr okay del w we get now frictional force what will be the frictional force now f r equal to mu into del w from there we'll get the expression okay so frictional torque dtr is expressed mu fr into r okay from there we get the expression like this so this is the frictional torque that is acting on the elementary ring part now we'll consider two cases if the uniform pressure is acting then what will be the condition then we'll see that the pressure is uniformly distributed over the entire area of the frictional phase then the intensity of the pressure p p will be axial load by area so w by pi r on square minus r2 square so the total frictional torque on the frictional phase will be we get dtr so t will be integration of dtr lower limit is r2 and upper limit is r1 from there we'll put the value of dtr and after integration we get the value like this okay mu w r so r is basically what is r r is nothing but the two third of r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by r1 square minus r2 square okay so this is the mean radius of frictional surface uh, if you consider the uniform pressure case so this formula you will have to remember okay now if you consider the axial uniform wear what will be the uh, case here so in this case we should consider the pressure the axial pressure actually varies inversely proportional to the distance from axis of the clutch distance r distance r from the axis of the clutch so p is inversely proportional to 1 by r so from there we get pr equal to constant now we know that the normal force acting on the ring del w del w equal to we have already got p into del w from there this is the del w p into 2 pi r dr so from there we get p into 2 pi r dr so p equal to you know c by r so we'll replace p here okay so w is total force acting on the frictional force integration r2 to r1 2 pi c dr that means del w so from there after an integration we get the value of c now we know dtr dtr expression i have uh, previously calculated okay so dtr is the expression here we can uh, replace here from 2 pi mu c okay r r square by 2 into after integration from there so finally we will replace c here c is replaced w by 2 pi r1 minus r2 so after putting the c value we get the expression like mu w r so here we see the mean radius of frictional surface is the r1 plus r2 by 2 okay 
so here we see that in general total frictional torque is basically we got the expression like mu wr okay but in general we will take the value of t equal to n mu wr n is the number of pair of frictional surfaces what is frictional surface number of pair that means here we see there at the both end both side total two two pairs of frictional surfaces are there total phone number one two three four that means two pairs so two pairs so n equal to will be two so the in general the formula will be n mu wr okay and from uniform pressure the r will be like this and from uniform wire for r will be like this okay so for a single disc or plate class normally both side of the discs are effective therefore single disc class n equal to 2 n shall be taken as 2 okay now pressure we have already observed that for the uniform axial wire condition the pressure varies inversely with the distance from the axis that means r so p is inversely proportional to r so p is proportional to 1 by r so we can see p is maximum at the inside radius and p is minimum at the outside radius so from this expression we can say p max into r2 equal to constant p min into r1 equal to constant from there we can uh, easily formulate p max equal to c by r2 p min equal to c by r1 so the average pressure you see p max value p mean value we have got so what will be the average value average value of pressure will be total load divided by pi of r1 square minus r2 square so for designing new class uniform pressure theory is to be used just remember this point designing new class remember pressure theory has to be used where old class uniform whack theory has to be used the uniform pressure theory gives the higher frictional torque than the uniform wire theory so in case of frictional class the uniform wire theory shall be used unless otherwise stated okay so unless unless uh, until uh, the uh, theory of failure i mean uh, sorry theory of designing is given okay in the numerical question if it is given no problem if it is not given you will have to consider the uniform wire theory so uniform wire theory you know capital r equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 now multiple disc class same thing here multiple disc class means is to be transmitted large amount of torque so n1 is the number of discs on the driving shaft n2 is the number of discs on the driven shaft so total number of pair of contact surface will be n1 plus n2 minus 1 just remember the n will be just here change for a multiple disc class n should be n1 plus n2 minus 1 okay the rest of the things will remain same now determine the maximum minimum average pressure in a plate class when the, the axial force is 4 kN that means w is given for the inside radius inside radius means 50, uh, r2 is given here 50 r1 is given uh, 100 so you have to consider assuming assume you have to uniform wire condition so what you have to find find out p max p min and p average so you know the p max into r2 equal to c we know what is the value of c uh, i mean r2 so from there we get the value of c again w equal to 2 pi c r1 minus r2 from the derivation we got just go through the derivation we have plotted that w equal to 2 pi c r1 minus r2 so put the value of w here okay put the value of c here put the value of r1 r2 you can formulate the p max samely we know p mean into r1 equal to c so we will get the value of c we know w equal to 2 pi c r1 minus r2 from this expression we will get the value of p mean and p average you know w by pi r1 square minus r2 square from this expression we will get the value of p average also okay this is a very simplest example one of the uh, very important uh, numerical for this particular chapter i have given you to solve in the assignment also i have mentioned a few steps how to solve that so go through that assignment numerical and solve it because this assign this kind of assignment is very much important for this particular chapter so okay so solve this assignment uh, use help from my hints parts and also to submit in the due date okay thank you